dedicate their lives to helping orphaned animals. They open their hearts and homes to all the challenges of raising a young life, no matter how large or small. They are the Wildlife Nannies. Today on Wildlife Nannies, badly injured kangaroo Kira makes a new friend with a patamelon at the Wildlife Hospital. Harry and his wife Karen take care of many orphaned animals, but Kira is not willing to eat. Will the baby kangaroo survive? And a thrilling day for raccoon dog Mitya. He gets two new adoptive brothers, goes to the vet, and even explores nature on his first day outside at the wildlife park. Also, an exciting wildlife moment with Nanny Bearble and her two warthogs, Kiki and Lily. It's time to explore the farm and meet all the animals, but these two babies decide to take the day off. Will they find their way back? For the past 20 years, this shelter has been a paradise for all sorts of animals in Australia, especially for kangaroos and their relatives. All the animals at this retreat have one thing in common, They've been badly injured by hunters, car accidents, or environmental poisons. This is Raven Shoe Australia. Harry Kuntz takes care of his orphaned and injured animals here at the Eagle's Nest Wildlife Hospital. After a work-related accident, Harry left Austria in search of a new purpose in life. When he noticed a great number of injured animals along Australia's outback roads, he decided to do something about it and founded his animal hospital 20 years ago. His girlfriend Karen has been helping him for the past three years. Another one. Yeah, the mother was hit by a car, but there's no visible injuries. This was just bought from Harry from Mount Garnet. The mother has been killed in an accident and she was half in the pouch, half outside and thanks God somebody saw it and put her out and called us. Karen immediately takes care of the traumatized baby. To determine how long it's been without food, she has to weigh this latest orphan. After that, the tiny baby they've named Kira needs lots of rest and quiet. Karen's learned a lot from Harry, who not only fights for the lives of animals, but also for their rights. I think it's not so easy. People, they, they have a different attitude here. You know, they grow up, everything what moves, shoot it. Everything what grows, knock it down. And this attitude has not changed in the last 50 years. You know, for city people, it's a different story, you know. But out here, they still see every day in the out the kangaroos running. So they don't see that they endangered or disappeared, you know? Will Harry and Karen be able to save their latest patient? In spring Germany, Nicola Goldsner is on her way home with a surprise. She's greeted by her two dogs, Esther and Ronnie. They're all excited to meet their new roommate, Mitya, the raccoon dog. Have a look, Mitya's here. Mitya's not shy about exploring his new home. 
After examining all the toys and playthings of the dogs, he soon claims them for himself. The new bed also gets a close inspection. It will take some time before Mitya gets used to his new surroundings. Nikola's greatest concern is that Mitya gets house trained as quickly as possible. But he's not really very interested in his own porto potty. All that exploration and running around makes a raccoon dog really hungry. Mitya, it's time. Wow, look at this. Yummy, yummy, huh? Great. You're doing so well. Not a lot coming out, huh? Don't press. The best part of all of this is that you get to form such a beautiful, close relationship to an animal. It's such a wonderful, close relationship. It's a great feeling. An animal like this accepts you as its own kind and relies on you. After gathering his strength, Mitya's ready to test his roommate's boundaries once again. It's not quite clear if he's annoying his adoptive brothers yet, but little Mitya has to show them who's boss once in a while. The dogs will just have to get used to this little bundle of energy. But Nikola knows all the tricks to make her new baby feel right at home. This pillow has a really soft cover. It'll make it nice and warm and cozy for him. It's also got an extra special feature. I built in a battery-operated heart, so to speak. Well, it imitates the heartbeat of a mother, so that the little ones don't feel all alone and abandoned. Now it's time for sleep. In the morning, Nikola has planned Mitya's first excursion into nature. How will he do outside? Kangaroo Kira has woken up in Australia. She's doing well considering what she's been through. I think that's an interesting thing. This one piece will make 52 layers. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. Download Veely now. But Harry is worried. Kira doesn't understand what a bottle is for and refuses to eat. This little swamp wallaby baby can't afford to be shy either if it wants to survive. She was very small when her mother died and Karen has to feed her regularly. It's a little swamp wallaby. Um, the mother got hit from a car and she f is fell out from the pouch. She has some injuries here on the head, bruises and cuts, and also she has a broken tail. She's approximately five months old, between four and five months old. She gets just the fur and needs the bottle so every four hours, also during the night. I have to feed her also during the night, often twice, because she eats in just a little amount and then I have to feed her again. Karen has already taken care of the little wallaby's wounds. After the accident, she didn't have a good chance of surviving. But thanks to Karen and Harry, she's doing well now. But what will happen to Kira? Karen's still trying to tempt her with the bottle, with little success. Now we have to get her to this, that she eats something. But at the beginning it's sometimes really hard just to us and to the artificial milk and artificial tits. And she's quite stressed now. 
She has to calm down first. Kira will have to trust Karen soon, or her chances for survival look grim. A major outing is planned for Mitya today. It's walk time with his new brothers. And he's enjoying the walk, just like a real dog, even if he's still not used to the leash. Nikola also has a surprise for him. Of course, Mitya isn't a real dog. He doesn't even have the short legs of a dachshund. He's really a low-lying model, let's just say that. It's harder for him to keep up with me and the dogs. I'll just carry him a little ways now and again. He's like a baby. Mitya's inquisitive nature doesn't stop, even at the veterinarian. Most animals are afraid of the doctor's office, but Mitya goes exploring and pokes into every corner. He only begins to protest when things seem to threaten him directly. Then again, who likes to have someone look down their throat like this? I think a lot of this is really just show for him. I mean, normally he'd be calling for his mother. Help me, help me, get me away from here. I don't really think he's suffering. I hope not. I don't think so either. Mitya's turning into quite a trooper. He even swallowed the deworm medication. Not that he had too much choice. Now Mitya's ready to meet all the other animals at the animal park. How will he react to all the wildlife there? It looks like Kira has finally begun to trust Nanny Karen, but she still refuses to eat. Perhaps she's still waiting for her mommy to return. We can go on saving wildlife forever. If we don't change the attitude from people, that they appreciate this wildlife we have here in Australia, you know, appreciate our environment. And because this wildlife is so unique, most of the animals, they exist just in Australia, you know. They don't exist on any other continent in the world. Like this little fellow here. He was brought in a few days before. This is a paddy melon. This is usually the lame in rainforest, or off the edges of rainforest, so they're not open forest here. And uh, it uh, was found, you know, on, on the side of the road, uh, it was just laying there, so somebody brought it to us. It is paralyzed from here on, it cannot move his legs. Come on. So there's a possibility it could have a broken back, or broken pelvics, or it is just from the swelling, you know, there's pressure on some nerves. And uh, when the swelling goes down, it could get better, you know. And I really hope so, because if it's a broken back, there's nothing, you know, we have to kill it anyway, you know. But we see, you know, how it works, we see. She was scratching and hissing and biting, but now she trusts us, see? She trusts us, you know. Look at this. Have you seen this? She stretched the leg. Has she stretched the leg? This is wonderful. There's a chance. Maybe. Yeah. Now we hope. We hope. Karen's decided to introduce Kara to the wallaby. These two seem to be getting along, and that's a good sign. But Kira will have to eat very soon, or she'll become too weak to survive. Mitya has no problem with eating. Cat food mixed with peaches, bananas, and baby gruel. It all tastes great to him. And as long as Mitya eats, that makes things very easy for Nicola. Oh, 
Today, real outdoor life will begin for him. We're going to the animal park where I work for the first time. There are many animals, many people, and many new smells and impressions. I think it'll be an exhausting day for him today. So, so that Mitya doesn't take off, he's put back in his cat harness. And then he's ready for his first big excursion. The 222-acre animal park in Spring, Germany is home to over 100 species of wild animals. Many wildlife caretakers, like Nicola, help preserve all species of North and East Europe here at the park. So that Mitya doesn't forget that he's a wild animal too, he'll meet some of his cohabitants. Look here, what a big monster. Look, Mitya, have a look at this. You've never seen anything like this, have you? Such as this variety of European bison that's being reintroduced to the area. Pigs! Piggies! Do you want to see the pigs? Look at that! Now you're being rude. Even the raccoon dog's natural enemies are represented here. Wolves and brown bears. And Mitya is already very excited. If I set him down in the underbrush, I can see that he's already starting to look for snails and that he's systematically searching the ground. That's really typical for a raccoon dog. He's having a lot of fun and he would probably do this for hours and hours if I let him. Mitya is acclimatizing to the park very nicely. But how will he react to his own kind? It's early morning in Australia, and Kira still has not found the will to eat. Nanny Karen now has to make her rounds and feed the other kangaroos. So Kira will bond and accept her as a mother. Karen takes her along, just like a real kangaroo mother. Kira will now meet the other baby kangaroos and wallabies. They all seem very curious about this new arrival, and Kira seems interested as well. Perhaps watching the others eat will instill some hunger in her. But will she finally take the hint and eat from a bottle? Time is running out. This is Kalkfeld, Namibia. This farm in southwestern Africa takes care of countless orphaned animals. Nanny Berbel Han recently received two warthog babies that are only a few weeks old. Kiki and Lily. She since raised them by hand, and now the twins won't leave her side. When these two came to us, they were totally shy at first and didn't want to have anything to do with us. I crawled around on the floor of the cage for hours and grunted. They finally accepted me as their adoptive mother, but it was a lot of hard work. These two lightning-fast hogs are exploring the farm already, but Nanny Bearble has to be close by. Warthogs are very social animals and stay in large families in nature. When warthogs feel comfortable, the hairs on their backs bristle.
Well, I groom them because they have a ton of lice. They are infested with their eggs. Kiki likes the brush. Lily hates it and she always runs away. So with her, I have to do the grooming in stages. Today, these two have decided to do something special. They are taking a day off. Now that Bearable has made them all pretty, they've decided to head for higher ground. This is the very first time that these two have escaped like that. They found a hole in the fencing and took off in the direction of the bush. They've explored the yard and the farm often, but behind the dam is the wilderness. And now we have a real problem. It never occurred to Lily and Kiki that it could be so much fun hanging out with other animals. They're now off to explore the open bush. And they don't seem too concerned that there are cheetahs, leopards, or lions out there. But Bearbull sure is worried. She assembles the rest of the family to help catch these two fugitives. That might not be so easy. The baby warthogs have now been found and need to be caught. But a real nanny knows how to get a hog back to the barn. It was really scary that they went out so far. I was worried for them, but I am really also a little proud of them. They crossed over the dam and went to the bush to have a look. I would be thrilled if they could be set free very soon. They need to grow up in their natural surroundings. Home again. But today, these two have proven that soon they'll be ready to face life on their own in the wilderness. It's an exciting moment for Mitya. The little raccoon dog is about to meet his own kind. At first, he seems curious, but when he realizes that he already knows this species, he quickly loses interest. Isn't this exciting? Oh, don't yawn. Look, they're just as hungry as you are. This is where Micho will soon make his new home. Let's go in here, baby. So that the older animals can get used to him, a small introduction is made. But there's not a great deal of interest on either side. The snails and worms are much more tempting. No, they are watching. Look. Raccoon dogs aren't loners. They usually live in couples. And we wouldn't want Mitya to become a loner until his dying days here. We want him to find a partner. Of course we do. Things are looking good for little Mitya. He's already got a girlfriend. With Nikola's help, he'll soon find his own way here at the park. And a raccoon dog wedding might not be far off. An important decision has to be made at the Eagle's Nest Wildlife Hospital. Kangaroo Kira is still refusing food. She's grown very weak, and if she won't eat now, there's no more hope for her recovery. Karen was ready to give up, and is now very relieved and happy about this unexpected turn of events. Kira finishes a whole bottle. I saved one from the five thousands, so that makes it worse to do. So probably you can teach the younger generation and say, look, this is worse to save it because your child or your grandchild want to also have kangaroos in, in Australia. It's now night time and the little kangaroos and wallabies are waiting for their nanny Karen. 
Harry's still on the road on a rescue mission. Someone called to report an injured animal. It's a kingfisher, a very rare species of bird. It looks like he broke a wing, and Harry has to put a splint on it. He's got a special talent for taking care of all sorts of animals. And while he's giving the bird antibiotics and vitamins, Nanny Karen is putting the rest of their babies to bed. Before bedtime, Karen will give the little swamp wallaby another bottle. Harry and Karen have a 24-hour job seven days a week. They're always there for the animals. Kira's now allowed to sleep close to Karen as well, just so she won't miss her. And when Karen finally turns out the light, Harry is snuggling with the other kangaroos in the camper. And so, another night comes to an end at this special wildlife emergency ward.